Hello, so this is episode 8. I'm going to be talking about stereolithography, SLA. So hopefully for the last episode, you did look at the links that are in the description of the last video. Because such videos really do present a more comprehensive view of the topic that I'm explaining now. So let's begin with today's episode then. So to Today I'll be telling you about what are the different types of SLA 3D printers, the, the different scanning mechanisms, the process of the SLA printing, and applications for SLA. So hopefully after this episode, you're able to state the two types of SLA methods that are generally used and to describe two types of scanning mechanisms that are generally used for laser-based kind of 3D printers and to write down the process of the SLA and lastly to state three applications of SLA 3D printers. So let's begin. So there are generally two types of SLA methods. Firstly a bottom-up approach and a top-down approach. The top-down approach is a more commonly used method for SLA. So basically you can see that the build platform in this case is submerged in a vat of polymer resin and the laser beam source is above the part. So the other method which is the bottom up approach is slightly better because if you build parts with internal cavities in there, the resins can flow out because due to gravity you flow downwards. However, in a top down approach, this will not occur because your liquid will get trapped in the cavity. So these are the two diff main difference type of SLA methods that people use. So since SLA uses a laser to cure the polymer, there are two possible methods in which to direct the laser so as to selectively cure the X and Y plane of the cross section. So the first method is the XY table. So this method is very similar to the previous two printing methods that I talked about the FDM and the LOM. So basically the laser is attached onto the red color head as you can see in the image number one and there are two axes X and Y axis in which a motor will, will move the laser beam head so that it is it, it can travel in the whole X and Y plane. So the next scanning mechanism is by using a scanning mirror. So basically the laser beam is shot onto this scanning mirror and this scanning mirror can rotate freely to reflect the laser beam onto the built surface to cure the polymer on the XY plane again. So these two scanning mechanisms has their advantages and disadvantages. So I will be going through with that on the next slide. In the next slide. So as for the scanning mirror, the disadvantage is that there, is, there will be distortion in the laser beam because if you reflect the laser beam directly downwards then you, you would have the original shape of the laser beam. However, if you were to reflect the laser beam onto, a, onto the widest part of the build plate, the laser beam will will be distorted and it becomes an oval instead of a circle. So this is also the benefit of the XY table because the XY table is always shooting the laser beam vertically downwards. So the laser spot is always in the original shape. So this makes the XY table a more accurate means of directing the laser beam. However, the scanning mirror is a very it's a faster way of scanning because because there's very little mechanical movement as compared to the XY table only the scanning mirror is moving so yes so the next time when you look into a 3D printer you can take a careful look on how does the printer actually does its scanning mechanism is it an XY table or is it using a scanning mirror or maybe something else so now let's move on to the process of SLA. So I, I didn't state in this slide, however, like all the other 3D printers, you need a 3D model in the STL file to be sliced into cross sections and then to input to the machine. 
So after that is done, the build plate in the SLA process is submerged into a is submerged into a vat of resin. And then the laser selectively cures the polymer resin onto the build platform. So adhesion of the first layer to the build platform is very important. So after that is done, the after that cross section is done, the vet moves in the respective x axis direction, whether it's upwards or downwards. So there, there's actually an error here. So it's not the bottom up process; it's the top down process. So for the top down process, where the laser beam or the light source is at the bottom of the machine so there is a peeling process that happens as the part detaches from the transparent base so this is important to note as well because then the adhesion of the part to the transparent base is also crucial and then the process is repeated until the part is finished so i will post videos by other people more on the process of SLA because it's so much easier to see the process when you can when you can see the process graphically so yes so now we move on to the applications of SLA so the main application of SLA and its main advantage is in rapid prototyping because SLA is a very accurate process so it produces a very fine resolution because it's a laser based system. The next application is in the investment casting patterns. Because SLA is one of the longest, one of the oldest 3D printing methods around. So there has been a number of materials developed for SLA process. So specific materials could be used for investment casting patterns. And lastly, jigs and fixtures. Basically, this is an application for almost all 3D printers because of the ability to create complex customized parts. So this is also one of the applications of SLA. So yeah. So before I move on to the summary of the SLA process, I realized in this episode I didn't really talk about the disadvantages of the SLA. So let me briefly tell you about the disadvantages. So firstly, the SLA requires a vat of resin. So the handling of this process method could be a bit messy because the vat of resin is liquid, it's quite hard to handle. And also the vat of resin could be toxic. So that could be quite bad because before the resin is cured, the resin could be a bit dangerous to humans. And other disadvantages is that SLA process usually requires a post curing process in a UV curing bath of some sort to further strengthen the part. So these are the two main disadvantage that disadvantages that I could think of for the SLA method. So let's move on to the summary. So I hope you know now that there are two main types of SLA methods in which people can create an SLA printer. And there are also two types of scanning mechanisms for laser beam type of 3D printers. And the distortion e effect phenomenon of laser beam when you use the scanning mirror. And the process of the SLA. And lastly, three applications of SLA. So I hope you know more about the SLA methods. And once again, I hope after you watch this episode, you look down to the description below to watch the links that I'll be posting of videos that people have done for the SLA method so that you have a better understanding of the method which will be very useful. So once again we reach to the end of episode 8 so I hope you understand more about the SLA process. So now I'll be telling you about the references. So the first reference is on the bottom up and top down illustration to explain the different types of SLA printers. So on the second reference is the illustration of the XY table. So for the third reference, I made a mistake. So this reference was supposed to be by the scanning mechanism mirror. So I will post this reference into the description below, but you can see the reference of this illustration on the slide itself just below the image. Lastly, and, and next we have uh, the illustration that shows the distortion of the laser beam. 
and lastly we have the applications of SLA printers that I took from 3D systems so yes I hope you stay tuned for episode 9 where I'll talk about another 3D printing method so thank you once again